Do we have the technology and the ability to intercept? Officially, no. Is Earth being washed by something not of this world? Is Earth in danger? A NASA insider has just slipped me 42 pages of classified JPL navigation data. Not just any data, mind you, but the kind of numbers that change everything we thought we knew about the interstellar comet 3i slash Atlas. The official story, the one you might hear on the news, is that it will miss Mars by a comfortable margin. But the numbers I'm holding, the ones stamped eyes only and locked behind firewalls until this very morning, they paint a much, much grimmer picture. They say impact is now the default. If the comet's nucleus holds together for another six weeks, the red planet will take a direct hit on September 26. This isn't some theoretical model or a what-if scenario dreamt up by a fringe group. This is the internal solution the lab printed, validated, and then tried to hide. We're talking about a potential collision, an event that could rewrite the face of the red planet forever. And the thing nobody tells you about this comet, it's behaving in ways we've never seen before, almost as if it's being controlled. This isn't just another space rock. It's an interstellar visitor with a trajectory that has top scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory losing sleep. We spent the entire afternoon and most of the night verifying checksums and timestamps on these documents. Every single page carries the same chilling header, Project Parallax, Trajectory Solution 3I-A26. The author list is redacted, of course, because nobody in their right mind would want their name attached to this, but the arithmetic. The arithmetic is naked, stark, and utterly undeniable. The comet's B-plane, and if you're not familiar with that, think of it as a cosmic dartboard centered squarely on Mars, has shrunk. It's gone from a relatively safe 1.95 million kilometers, a distance that would have put everyone at ease, down to 0 0.0. 0. 0. 0. That's a bullseye, folks. A direct hit. The reason for this terrifying shift? A sudden, inexplicable velocity tweak of 9.8 kilometers per second that appeared in the data in late July. Now, the thing nobody tells you about comets is that they do outgas. They do change course slightly. But this wasn't some random, chaotic burst of gas. This outgassing event, this sudden surge of propulsion, aligned almost perfectly with the comet's existing velocity vector, essentially breaking just enough for Mars's gravity to grab the object and slam it in. It's too precise, too intentional. The memo ends with a single line, bolded, underlined, and screaming urgency. Recommend immediate consultation with planetary defense. No one outside the inner circle, no one at all, was ever supposed to read that sentence. This was the moment the whispers turned into frantic classified emails. Something was pushing this comet. Something was guiding it. And nobody knew what it was. People shrug when you say, comet hits Mars. Mars is empty, right? A desolate, uninhabited rock in space? No, that's the thing nobody tells you about Mars. It's anything but empty. There are six active spacecraft in orbit right now. NASA's MAVEN, ESA's Mars Express and Trace Gas Orbiter, the UAE's HOPE, India's Mongolian, and China's Tianwen-1. These aren't just bits of metal. These are our eyes and ears on another world our robotic ambassadors to the cosmos. An impact would sandblast every single one of them with ejecta, traveling faster than rifle bullets. The blast column would punch a hole into the upper atmosphere, ionizing an area the size of Texas and short out solar panels across the entire fleet. Science operations would go dark overnight, ending decades of invaluable research in a single, catastrophic moment. But it's more than just losing our robotic explorers. Mars is the only planet we can realistically reach with current technology if Earth ever needs a lifeboat, a backup, a second chance. Losing our off-site backup isn't just a small deal. It's a planet-altering event for humanity's future.
Mars has always represented our dreams, our first step towards becoming a multi-planetary species. An attack on Mars, whether intentional or not, would be an attack on that future, a message that maybe we should just stay home. This wasn't just about a rock hitting another rock. This was about billions of dollars of equipment on and around Mars, yes, but more importantly, it was about the psychological impact, the crushing of our collective aspirations to reach for the stars. The Hubble Space Telescope, with all its incredible power, could only pin the nucleus of 3I Atlas between 320 meters and a staggering 5.6 kilometers. That spread, that massive uncertainty, is not reassuring, not by a long shot. At the low end, 320 meters, you're looking at a Tunguska-style airburst, an event that, if it happened on Earth, could wipe out a continent. Think about that for a second. But at the high end, 5.6 kilometers, you're talking about Chicxulub's little brother, enough energy to rewrite Earth's climate, trigger mass extinctions, and fundamentally alter the course of life on our planet. The classified memo, the one that slipped through the cracks, doesn't mince words. It uses the pessimistic diameter, 4.1 kilometers. Plug that into the standard crater calculator, the same one scientists use to predict impact scenarios, and you get a 70-kilometer primary crater, a magnitude 10 ground quake that would shake the entire planet to its core, and a dust plume that would cloak Mars for years, plunging it into a perpetual twilight. The rovers, our brave little explorers, would freeze to death under a black sky, their solar panels choked with dust, their missions ended in silence. The very geology of Mars would be rewritten in an instant, leaving a scar visible for millennia, a chilling reminder of what could have been. Here's where it gets really interesting and frankly infuriating. NASA's public page still lists the missed distance for 3I Atlas as a comfortable 30 million kilometers. That number, the one meant to keep the public calm, was true back in June. After the July outgassing event, the one that tweaked its trajectory, the PR office froze the figure. They stopped updating it. Why? The thing nobody tells you about these situations is the playbook. The spacecraft fleet currently around Mars cannot scatter. MAVEN is critically low on fuel. A diversion burn, even a small one, would end its mission prematurely. ESA's ExoMars needs full sunlight to map those crucial methane plumes. There's no hiding behind the planet for that mission. So what's left? The only move left in the playbook is silence. Keep the public calm, keep the funding stream intact, and hope, against all scientific probability, that the comet fragments into harmless dust before arrival. The leak, the documents we've shared, tell us that hope is gone. It's a desperate gamble, a calculated risk to maintain control of the narrative, even if it means withholding critical information from the very people who fund their endeavors. It's the real story the one they didn't want you to know, the one that prioritizes optics over transparency, all while a potentially planet-altering event looms closer. Interstellar objects, by all the rules of astrophysics we understand, are supposed to be inert snowballs, cold and lifeless travelers from beyond our solar system. But 3i Atlas? This one started venting cyanogen and diatomic carbon a staggering 2.8 AU from the sun, that's far too cold for standard sublimation. It's like watching an ice cube boil in a freezer. And then there's the tail. The tail points sunward half the time, behaving as if the nucleus carries its own steering thrusters, defying the very physics of cometary tails. Abby Loeb's group at Harvard, bless their curious minds, flagged this anomaly months ago. They saw something strange, something that didn't fit. And the new data, the classified data, confirms their suspicions. These jets are gimbling like a Falcon 9 grid fin, precisely altering its course. Natural ice pockets simply don't do that. The thing nobody tells you about comets is that they are notoriously unpredictable, like cosmic cats chasing their own tails of gas and dust. But 3i Atlas was different. Its movements were too precise, too intentional. It was pulsing. Every 17 minutes, like clockwork, it would erupt with a precise plume of gas, this wasn't the random outgassing of a typical comet warming up near the sun. This was a rhythm, a heartbeat. Each pulse was a tiny nudge, subtly but surely altering its path, keeping it locked on its collision course with Mars, as if the comet was steering itself. 
So either we're witnessing an unprecedented fragmentation cascade, a cosmic anomaly that defies all known science, or, and this is the profoundly unsettling part, someone or something is trimming the flight path. The memo itself doesn't speculate on the who or what behind it, but the math is ruthless, cold, and unforgiving. If the same Delta B repeats in September, the impact probability jumps to a chilling 96%. The implications are staggering. Could this be a natural phenomenon we've never witnessed before, or was it something else entirely? They were no longer just tracking a comet. They were observing a guided object of unknown origin, and it was getting closer every day. The clock is ticking, and the options are dwindling. September 3rd is the last theoretical window for an emergency deflection. But here's the brutal truth. Nothing in the current fleet, nothing we have sitting on a launch pad right now, can reach the comet in five weeks. The Space Launch System, NASA's next-gen heavy-lift rocket, is grounded until late 2026. A Falcon Heavy could launch a kinetic impactor, a last-ditch effort to nudge it off course, but the hardware would need to be sitting on the pad, fueled and ready to go. Right now, it's not. The leak includes a chilling footnote, almost buried in the technical jargon. Consider standoff nuclear option via classified NRO bus. Translation, for those of us outside the acronym-filled corridors of power, we could lob a Cold War-era warhead, a nuclear solution, but only if we admit the threat exists. And that's the rub, isn't it? The White House has not been briefed. The Planetary Defense Coordination Office, the very people tasked with protecting us from cosmic threats, is still at level zero. No alert, no heightened state of readiness. The thing nobody tells you about these situations is the playbook. The spacecraft fleet currently around Mars cannot scatter. Maven is critically low on fuel. A diversion burn, even a small one, would end its mission prematurely. ESA's ExoMars needs full sunlight to map those crucial methane plumes. There's no hiding behind the planet for that mission. So what's left? The only move left in the playbook is silence. Keep the public calm, keep the funding stream intact, and hope against all scientific probability that the comet fragments into harmless dust before arrival. The leak, the documents we've shared, tell us that hope is gone. It's a desperate gamble, a calculated risk to maintain control of the narrative, even if it means withholding critical information from the very people who fund their endeavors. It's the real story, the one they didn't want you to know, the one that prioritizes optics over transparency, all while a potentially planet-altering event looms closer. The thing nobody tells you is that our systems are built for threats we understand, for predictable trajectories. But how do you respond to a threat you don't understand? A threat that seems to be, dare I say it, guided? The secret meetings began, but the biggest shock was yet to come. The pattern is clear. It's a strategy as old as secrets themselves. Choke the data, choke the narrative, choke the panic. Keep the public in the dark, manage the information flow, and hope it all just goes away. But the internet, the collective curiosity of humanity, is a force they can't entirely control. The psychological impact of the situation, the possibility that 3i Atlas was not a natural object, changed everything. If it was a piece of technology, a probe, or a weapon, then its trajectory was no accident. Mars wasn't a random target, it was chosen. And that, my friends, is a terrifying thought. Mars may be the direct target, the bullseye on the cosmic dartboard, but make no mistake, Earth gets the aftershock. An impact of this magnitude would eject 10 trillion kilograms of rock and ice into solar orbit. Within months, that massive amount of material would form a shotgun cloud of debris that inevitably crosses Earth's path. Meteor storms, normally a beautiful celestial display, would become fireball swarms, turning our night sky into a dangerous light show. Satellites, the very backbone of our modern communication and navigation, would start dropping like flies. Climate simulations give us a chilling possibility, a 2% chance that Mars ejected material could form a planetary dust veil on Earth, small numerically, but catastrophic in civilizational terms. If billions of tons of Martian rock and dust escape into space, they'd create a new unpredictable debris field with real consequences for our climate and agriculture. Leaked Monte Carlo runs also suggest a 38% chance that Comet 3i Atlas fragments into four or more pieces before October. Fragmentation might sound safer, but a cloud of kilometer-scale chunks is far harder to track or deflect than a single object. 
Mars could suffer multiple impacts that vent water vapor and leave lasting scars, and any future crewed missions would face a chaotic minefield. We may avoid disaster, we may try a kinetic intercept, or this could force a grim lesson. Space is crowded, chaotic, and indifferent. Stay alert, keep the data unfiltered, and question the official silence.